In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make these animated tabs in PowerPoint in just a few minutes with your own custom created content. And as soon as you click, the next tab will open up and slide to the left. You can do this with however many tabs that you like and any content can be added. It's a very flexible way of adding content to your slide and showing it in a dynamic way. You can also click once more and have a full loop of the presentation. If you want to follow along in the tutorial, this is the color palette that I've used so you can pause the video and add them to your slides. And in case you want to save some time or download the template, I have linked it in the description below. This tutorial consists of multiple parts. First, I will create the individual tabs with the content. Then I will learn how to stack them on top of each other. Next, we will animate them using the morph transition. And finally, there's also an alternative that if you don't have morph, you can also do it with older versions of PowerPoint. And we're starting from a blank slide. First thing you want to do is want to go to the design tab go to variants and here we choose the color palette that we like. In our case, it's the bright blue. Go to the home tab again and now let's format the background. Right click, format background and we want to go for a gradient fill. I'm choosing this radial gradient fill, so the bottom one, where we have slightly lighter tint in the middle and gradually gets darker towards the outside, but it's very subtle. Next, we want to add a rectangle. So go to shapes, add a rectangle and drag it from the top right corner about three quarters of the way to the left. We're going to remove the outline and give this the darkest fill or the second darkest fill of blue. Next, we want to add a text box. So select text box and type in the number one. Select it and we're going for the font chunk five. You can choose whichever font you like, but I kind of like this font for this effect. Give it the same blue color. And for the font size, you can select the large numbers. So let's try 72, but I think it can be bigger. Here you can see that 96 is the largest number available. If you want to go higher, you can just click this font size increase button, or you can type the number in manually, let's say 120 and press enter to have that number. I'm going to position it in the middle of the slide, maybe slightly upwards, and then connect the letter to the tab. So I'm going to place it right about here. Now let's also do some formatting of the slides. So right click on the shape, format shape, and we're going to go for a shadow effect and click the standard presets where the shadow drops to the left. Now select the number, go to text options, also add a shadow and have the same angle on the text. This way it kind of stands out a bit more against the background and I think that looks really nice. So this is the first tab that we have created. Now let's add some content to the slide. Select the text box, drag it on the screen, call it 01 or type in 01. The font we're going to use chunk 5 as well. And then we're going to use a, a white font. Center it in the middle and maybe let's go for font size 150. I think that looks quite good. And we're going to position everything a bit to the left of the slide, so not entirely in the middle, because we're going to pull out the tabs and we need some space on each side. Add another text box. And here we're going to type in your subtitle or title. I'm just going to use dummy text, lorem ipsum dollar. And for this font, I'm choosing Montserrat, I think it looks nice. Go to subfonts and let's use extra bold. Center it in the middle and also make it white. Now this is quite a harsh contrast, so I'm going to select the large text, right click format shape, text options, and then add some transparency to it. This way it's way more subtle. Let's put it on 75 or let's do 80. And then this font, I think we can position it somewhere on top and I think that gives it quite a nice effect. Let's add one more text box for the content and then add some dummy text. Reduce the font size and we're going to center it in the middle. I kind of like to align the text box roughly with the title. I think that gives a cool balance to the slide. So let's position it here in the middle. And for the font, I'm using Montserrat, but I think this looks a bit too heavy. It really depends on the screen that you're using. So I'm going for extra light on this one and increase it slightly. There we go. Now as a finishing touch, you can go to insert Add some icons and here let's type in a network. You can use your custom icons. I'm just going to select this one. Graphics will make it white and then go back to the graphics format tab and also give this a 75% transparency and then position it at the bottom of your slide. If you hold the control key, you can scroll backwards to zoom out or you can use this toggle switch to play around with it. So I'm going to make it slightly smaller and position it in the middle. You can select all the elements and play around with the positioning. 
I'll do something like this. We have equal space on the top and the bottom. And this gives a well-balanced slide. I'm going to close these tabs. And this is the first tab with content that we have created. Now we're going to group everything together. So I'm going to group the text, Control G to group it. And I'm also going to group the tab and the number. And then I'm going to select everything. So both the tab group and the text group and group that one as well. You can do it in once, but I like to split it up. So if you have changes afterwards, it's easy to select the groups. Now we're going to duplicate the slide. You can right click duplicate or press Ctrl D a few times. Now we want to go to the second one. And here we just type in the number two and then position it so that it sort of meets the border. Of course, that means we also need to change the content and we're going to select the rectangle and also change the colors. I'm going one tint lighter for each one and I'll do the same with the fonts. So they nicely match up with each other and blend into one another. Go to number three, change the number. You can also play around with the arrow key to just nudge it to the side, change this number as well, and also make this one one tint lighter. Oh, that has to be two tints because we're on number three already. And same for the text. And number four, we do the exact same thing. Change the content. And here you will see if we choose that lightest color, it's going to be this one. Same for the text. We can see that the contrast is a bit too small. So I'm going to select the text elements and I'm going to give it a dark fill. So you can choose whichever one you like. I think the darkest one will look nicest. And then this one, of course, we want to give it transparency again. Let's try 80%. And do the same with the color, so give that the dark color as well with the icon. And this is a lot more readable. Now you can see that we have one tab for each or one grouped item for each tab. And that is the result that we want for now. And now let's look at how we can stack them on top of each other. So for stacking them on top of each other, I like to duplicate the first slide. So we always have a working file to work with. And then go to number two, the second tab. Ctrl C or Ctrl X and Ctrl V on the previous one and then just drag it to the side. This way we have two grouped items. One is at the bottom and two we're now overlaying on top. I'm not looking at the position on the slide. So you'll see this one overlaps the slide border. That doesn't matter. We're just going to position the tabs. So here we have some spacing between the first tab and the number. We're going to repeat it for the number three. Paste that on the slide and we're going to position it at about the same distance. And I repeat it one more time for number four and then pull that group to the side. There we go. Now we hold the control key and scroll backwards or use that toggle shift key, select the four grouped items and drag them slightly downwards. This way we can see the border of the slide. Hold the shift key to move it in a straight line to the right side. And then you give it about the same distance as the taps. So you want this lightest step to be about the same distance as this one. So let's put it here and then we shift it back to the top. And this way, if we increase this preview here, we can see that they nicely align at the right of the slide. Now let's add some content. So I'm going to add a title here. Let's type in tabs. I'm going to use the font Montserrat. Use the sub font black, make it white. Increase the size, let's try 100, maybe a bit more. There we go. Also for this one, I'm going to format shape and add some shadow to the text. That way it just stands out a bit more against the background. And it's also in line with the tabs that we have. Copy, make it a few sticks smaller, center it in the middle. And we go for the sign painter font. And let's call it animated. You can use a high contrast color like the orange and then place it on top. You can overlap them if you want. But then I would suggest that you also change the angle of the shadow and play around with the size. So the distance, we're going to increase it so it falls on the text below. I always like that effect. Increase transparency and the blur. I think this gives quite a cool effect. You can play around with the settings and position it however you like. So this gives us quite a cool slide. I'm just going to put it on full screen. And we see that we have a title and the numbers on the side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and send those to back send to back that way they are behind all the layers or they should be so let's do that again send to back in this way they are behind all the different layers and now we're going to look at the animation part of the slide first with the morph transition 
And for that, we're going to duplicate the slide. Let me get rid of those. And now on the first step, I'm going to shift the text to the right. So it disappears behind everything. And I'm going to select the first step and pull that one out. I'm going to pull it out until it's about the same size to the right, the distance as to the left of the content. So it's nicely balanced. I'm going to duplicate once more and repeat for the second step until you have the distance that is equal here as well as here. So I think that looks good. Copy once more, repeat for number three, and a final time where you repeat it for the number four. And what I often like to do is I copy the initial one and drag it to the bottom. Now, if we select all of the slides, go to animations or transitions and select morph, this will give a quite a nice effect. Now I'm going to increase the duration to about 2.75 and let's preview what we have. And this is how you make this cool animated tabs presentation in PowerPoint, where if you click, the text disappears and the first tab pulls out. And if you click again, number two will pull out. Click once more for the content of number three. And then click a final time for the content of number four. And if you click once again, you will loop it back to the beginning and you have that same starting position. Now this works really well if you have the morph transition. Now some of you don't have the latest version of PowerPoint, so you can also do it with older versions. So now we're going to look at the animation part for older versions of PowerPoint without the morph transition. And for that, I'm going to start with a clean page. I'm just going to remove this for now. And I'm just going to show you the animation part. So we have the four tabs. Let's remove morph. What we're going to do is we're going to select tab number one go to animations and choose path animation. We're going to choose for lines and this will animate it, but you see it goes downwards. Now this green dot is a starting point and a red dot is the ending point of the animation. So we want to drag the red point until we position it at the end position. So you can see it's sort of faded out half transparent, but you see the edges on the left are now equally to the edges on the right. So that, you know, so that way you know it's perfectly positioned. Release it once you're happy and click away from the slide or from the tab. We select the tab number one again, and now we click on animation painter. This will copy the same, the exact animation. And you see, if we hover over one, it will give us a different cursor. But if we hover over two, we can click and it will paint the animation. We repeat this step. So just animation painter, click on number three. The preview here, it only shows one animation, but you'll see in a second that they will line up nicely. And repeat it a final time for number four. This way, if we now select the slide and go to preview, we can see that we have the same effect. So as soon as we click once, we stay on the same slide, but we pull out the tab. Click once more, and the second tab will animate. Third time, and then the final click a fourth time, the tab will animate as well. For the title, if you want to keep that, you can give it a fade animation or a fly in. You can really play around with that. But this is how it works for the older versions of PowerPoint if you only have the animation and not the morph. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint, make sure to drop a follow and watch the video on the screen right now.